Good evening, everyone. Um, uh, I'm Marcelinus Banu from class 33 5A07. Today we want to talk about the Greek theater, uh, English drama. Let's start. The origins of the English, uh, sorry, the Greek theater began in the 6th century BCE in Athens with the performance of tragedy plays at religious festivals. This, in turn, inspired the genre, the genre of Greek comedy plays. The two types of Greek drama would be hugely popular and performance spread around the Mediterranean and influenced Hellenistic and Roman theater. As a consequence of their lasting popularity, the work of such great playwrights as uh, Sophocles, Euripides, and Aristophanes form the foundation of, upon which all modern theater is based. In a similar way, the architecture of the Greek of the ancient Greek theater has continued to inspire the, the design of theaters today. And the, the origins of tragedy, the exact origins of tragedy, or the Tragoida are debated among scholars. Some have linked the rise of the genre to uh, an early art form. The lyrical performance of epic poetry. The other suggests a strong links with the rituals performed in the worship of Dionysos, such as sacrifice of goats, a some ritual called Tragodia, and the wearing of masks. Dionysos become known as the god of theater, and perhaps there is another connection, the drinking rites which resulted in the whispers losing full control of their emotions and in effect becoming another person. Much as actors or hypocritae hope to do when performing, the music and dance of Dionysus ritual was most evident in the role of chorus and the music provided by an Aulus player. But rhythmic elements were also preserved in the use of first trochaic tetrameter and then the iambic trimeter in the delivery of the spoken words. Below is the example of the mask that used in the tragedy. The origins of theater, the first play and the first actor, the earliest origins of drama are to be found in Athens where ancient hymns called Dithyrams were sung in honor of the god Dionysus. These hymns were later adapted for uh, choral processions in which participants would dress up in costumes and masks. Eventually, certain members of the chorus evolved to take uh, special roles within the processions but they were not yet actors in the way would understand it. The development came later in the 6th century BC when the tyrant Pisistratus, who then ruled the city, established a certain of new public festivals. One of these, the city of Dionysia, a festival of entertainment held in honor of the god Dionysus, featured competition in music, singing, dance, and poetry. And most remarkable of all winners was said to be wandering board bard called Thespis. According to tradition, in, 500, in 534 or 535 BC, Thespis astounded audiences by leaping on the back of a wooden cart and reciting poetry as if his was the character who line was reading. In doing so, he became the world's first actor and is now from him that we get the word the world thespian and on the top right we can see the statue of the greek theater from documentary next the origins of theater the first play and the first actor continue number one the first play were performed with just one actor called a protagonist and a chorus of people who help him to tell the story however Throughout the 5th century BC, playwrights continued to innovate. The playwright 
Achilles added a second speaking role called the antagonist and reduced the chorus from 50 to 12. His play, The Persians, first performed in 472 BC, is the oldest surviving of all Greek plays. His pupil, Sophocles, went to add a third actor, while Euripides added both a prologue in introducing the subject of play and the Deus Ex Machina, a divine figure who wrap up uh, any loose ends at the close, wealthy citizens would sponsor plays by paying taxes called the Choregia, and just like Pisistratus, the tyrant who established the city Dionysia, Dionysia to, en to enhance his own popularity, many of these wealthy patrons hoped the succeed would play the sponsor would provide them with a way into politics. The first play were performed in theater of Dionysius, built in the shadow of the Acropolis in the Athens at the beginning of the fifth century, but theater provided to be popular. They soon spread all over Greece. Drama was classified according to three different types of genre, comedy, tragedy, and satire plays. These are the differences of the different type of Greek drama and their importance. The ancient Greek took their entertainment very seriously and used drama as a way to investigate the world they live in and what it meant to be human. The three genres of drama were the first one we have comedy, satire plays, and more, more important of them all is tragedy. The first one is comedy. The first comedies were mainly satirical and mock men in power of their vanity and foolishness. The first master of comedy was the playwright Aristophanes. Much later, Menander wrote comedies about ordinary people and made his plays more like sitcoms. Number two is uh, tragedy. Tragedy dealt with the big themes of love, loss, pride, the abuse of power, and the fraught relationship between men and gods. Typically, the main protagonist of tragedy commits some terrible crime without realizing how foolish and arrogant he has been. Then, as he slowly realizes his error, the world crumbles around him. The three great playwrights of tragedy were Achilles, Sophocles, and Euripides. Last but not least, number three is the satire plays. The short of plays were performed between the acts of tragedies and made fun of the plight of the tragedy's character. The satyrs were mythical half-humans, half-goat figures, and actors in this play were large phalluses for comic avac. For example, of this play survive, they are classified by some authors as tragic comic or comedy dramas. Now we go to the structure of the place. Uh, place, sorry. The basic structure of Greek tragedy is very simple. After a prologue spoken by one or more characters, the chorus enters, singing and dancing. Scenes then alternate between spoken sections or dialogue between characters and between um, characters and chorus, and sung sections during which the chorus dance. Here are the fa the basic part of uh, of the of a Greek tragedy. The first one we have the prologue, spoken by two or character before the chorus appears. The prologue usually gives the the mythological background necessary for understanding the events of the play. Number two, parodos. This is the song sung by the chorus as it first enters the orchestra and dances. Next is the first episode. This is the first of many episodes when the characters and chorus talk. Next, first, start Simon. At the end of each episode, the other character usually leaves the stage and the chorus dance and sings as Stasimon or choral ode. The ode usually reflects on the things said and done in the episodes and put into, into some kind of a large mythologi mythological framework. And for the rest of the play, there is alternation between the episode of uh, Stasima until the final scene, called the Exodus. 
at the end of the play, the chorus exits singing uh, professional songs, which usually offers words of wisdom related to the action and outcome of the play. And this is the staging in the ancient Greek era. As you can see from the picture, um, they have orchestra and then theatron, skin, and parodos. As for the, for the orchestra, is the round place in the middle is the literally translated into dancing space was normally circular and we have the theatron that the theatron is actually literally translated into viewing place is where all the spectators or you know the the people who watch the the, the drama uh, sit and then we have the skene or skin the skin literally translated into tent was the building di directly behind the stage. And last, we have the parodos, or the parodoi, literally translated into passageways, of the path by which the chorus and some actors met their entrance and exits. This is the explanation. The orchestra is a level space where the chorus would dance and sing and interact with the actors who were on the stage near the skin. The earliest orchestras were simply made of hard earth, but in the classical period, some orchestra begins to pave with marbles and other, and other uh, materials. In the center of the orchestra, there was often a thymil or altar. The orchestra of the theater in, of Dionysius, Dion, Dionysius in Athens was about 60 feet in diameter. Next, we have the theatron. Was usually part of hillside overlooking the orchestra, and often wrapped around the large, large part portion, portion of the orchestra. See the uh, the diagram above. Spectators in the fifth century BC was probably sat on the cushions or boards, but by the fourth century, the theatron of many Greek theater had marble seats. Skin or skene, during the fifth century, the stage of the theater of Dionysius in Athens was probably raised only two or three steps above the level of the orchestra and was perhaps 25 feet wide and 10 feet deep. The skin was directly back of the stage and usually decorated as place, as a palace, temple, or other buildings, depending on the needs of the play. It had at least one set of doors and actors could make uh, entrance and exit through them. There was also access to the roof of the skin from behind, and uh, so that actors play actors that playing gods can, and other characters such as the watchman at, at the beginning of the Achilles Agamemnon could appear on the roof if only if needed. Last one we have the parados. They are the parts of, of which by the, by which the chorus and some actors, such as those who represent messengers uh, or people returning from abroad, made their entrance and exits. The audience also used them to enter and exit the theater before and after the performance. The conclusions. So the Greek theater, originating as religious rites, evolve into a sophisticated arts from that profoundly influenced Western drama. We explored the three dramatic genre, uh, genre tragedy, comedy, and set of play, each reflecting various human ex experience and social societal norms. Playwrights like Achilles, Sophocles, and Euripides crafted timeless stories that delve into theme of fate, morality, and human nature. The architecture of Greek theater, um, with their open airs, designs, and remarkable acoustic, showcase Greek innovations and community spirit. These are theaters uh, not only provided entertainment, but also fostered civic unity. Moreover, the use of the mass of the, and the chorus highlighted in the plan of ritualistic origins with storytelling, creating an, an immersive audience experience. 
In a sense, Greek theater and during legacy continues to shape modern theater and literature, demonstrating the timeless power of storytelling. That's all for the presentation, and um, thank you for your attention. Now let's continue to the part two. Birth was the death of him again. Words are few. Dying, too. Birth was the death of him. Ghastly grinding ever since. Up at the lid to come. Incredible and creep. At suck, first fiasco. With the first totters. From mammy to nanny and back. All the way. Bend it back and forth, so ghastly grinding on. From funeral to funeral, to now, this night, to second and half billion second again, two and a half billion seconds. Hard to believe, so few. From funeral to funeral, funerals off. He all but said of loved ones. 30,000 nights. Hard to believe, so few. Born dead of night. Sun long sunk behind the larches. New needles turning green. In the room dark gaining. Till faint light from the standard lamp. Wicked turned alone. And now. This night, up at nightfall, every nightfall, faint light in room, whence unknown, none from window, no next to none, next to none. No such thing as none. Ropes to window and stares out. Stands there staring out, stock still staring out. Nothing stirring in that black vase. Ropes back in the end to where the lamp is standing. Was standing. When last went out, loose matches in right hand pocket. Strikes one on his buttock the way his father taught him. Takes off milk white globe and sets it out to set it down, match goes out. Strikes a second as before. Takes off chimney smoke clouded, holds in left hand. Match goes out. Strikes a third as before and set it to wick. Puts back chimney. Match goes out. Puts back low, turns wick low. Backs away to edge of light and turns to face east. Blank wall. So nightly up, sock, night gown, window, lamp, backs. Away to edge of light and stands facing blank wall. Covered with pictures once. Pictures of. He all but said of loved ones on frame on glass, pit to wall with growing pins. All shapes and sizes. Down one after another, gone. Torn to stretch and scattered, strewn over the floor, not at once sweep, no sudden fit of no word, ripped from the wall and torn to stretch one by one, over the years, 
years of night, nothing on the wall, now but the pins, not all, some out with the wrench, some still pinning a shred. So stand there, facing blank wall, dying on. No more, no less, no less, less to die. Ever less like light at nightfall, stands there facing his blank pinpoint surface, once white in shadow, who once named them all. There was father, that brave void there, mother, that other, there together smiling, wedding day, there all three. That grey blot. That alone, he alone. Not now forgotten or gone so long, gone, ripped off. And torn to shred, scattered all over the floor. Swept out of the way under the bed and left. Thousand threads under the bed with the dust and spiders. All the he all but said the loved ones. Stands there facing the wall, staring beyond. Nothing there either. Nothing stirring there either. Nothing stirring anywhere. Nothing to be seen anywhere. Nothing to be heard anywhere. Room once full of sounds, faint sounds, place unknown. Fewer and fainter as time wore on, nights wore on. None now, no, no such thing as none. Rains and nights still slant against the panes, or dropping gentle on the place beneath even now. Lamps smoking through wick turn low, strange, faint. Smoke issuing through flint in gold. Low ceiling stained by night after night of this dark, shapeless <sighs> blood on service elsewhere. Is white, once white, stands facing wall after the various motion described. That is up at nightfall and into gown and socks. No, in them already. In the moonlight, all day, all day and night. Up at nightfall in gown and socks. And after the moment to get his buried robes to window. Faint light in room, unterribly flightily faint, whence unknown. Stand stop still staring out into black vast. Nothing there. Nothing stirring. That he can see. Here dwells. Thus as if unable to move again, or no, we left to move again. Not enough, we left to move again. Turns in the end and gropes to where he knows the lamb is standing. Thinks he knows was last standing when last went out. <sighs> 